So let me discuss about another class 1A agent that is procainamide. Right, another class 1A agent that is procainamide. Now, if you take this procainamide, remember this is an orally active derivative of a local anesthetic that is procaine. Okay, so it is a derivative of right, it is derivative of a procaine. Now, what is this particular procaine? This procaine it is a local anesthetic agent right it is local anesthetic agent and how is this procainamide given it is given orally right now you take the metabolism of this procainamide remember this procainamide is metabolized in the liver right it is metabolized in the liver and it is metabolized by what is called as acetylation right it is metabolized by what is called as acetylation so once this procainamide is metabolized by acetylation what is being produced is right what is being produced from the procainamide is n acetyl procainamide right n acetyl right n acetyl Procainamide. So, N-acetyl procainamide is formed by acetylation of this particular procainamide. Now, what is the property of this N-acetyl procainamide? This N-acetyl procainamide that will retain the potassium channel blocking activity, right? So, this N-acetyl procainamide, it has, right, it has potassium channel blocking property right so that is an important point about the n acetyl procainamide now you take the acetylation right remember there are fast acetylators and as well as slow acetylators right there are fast and as well as the slow acetylators of the procainamide so basically procainamide is undergoing metabolism by acetylation so you have the fast acetylators of the procainamide and you also have the slow acetylators right you have the fast and as well as the slow acetylators of the procainamide right of procainamide now a point what i want to tell you here is you take those group of individuals who are slow acetylators right remember in those individuals who are slow acetylators long term therapy with high dose of this drug can result in drug induced lupus erythematosus right that is particularly in the slow acetylators okay so remember in case of slow acetylators right in case of slow acetylators long term therapy right long term therapy with high dose of this procainamide can result in drug induced lupus erythematosus right can result in drug induced lupus erythematosus okay so this in case of slow acetylators now you take the indications of class 1a agents right so let me tell you the indications of class 1a agents so if you take the indications for class 1a agents they include number one supraventricular tachycardia and another indication is your vt that is ventricular tachycardia next they are also indicated in case of right they are also indicated in case of symptomatic ventricular premature beats right symptomatic ventricular premature beats next 
they are also indicated in the prevention of ventricular fibrillation. Right, they are also indicated in the prevention of ventricular fibrillation. Okay, so these are the indications of class 1A agents. Now, now let me tell you, you take procainamide and as well as quinidine. While procainamide and quinidine may be used for conversion of atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm, but remember they should only be used in conjunction with AV node blocking agents. Okay, so if you take this procainamide and as well as the quinidine, they can be used for the conversion of right they can be used for the conversion of atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm right but whenever you use procainamide and quinidine for the conversion of atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm they should only be used in conjunction with av node blocking agents right so along with these drugs you should give Right, along with these drugs, you should give AV node blocking agents. Now, what are those AV node blocking agents? The AV node blocking agents, they include digoxin. They include verapamil, which is a calcium channel blocker. And the other agent, they include the beta blockers. Right, the other agents, they include beta blockers. Now, the question is, right, now the question is, why you need to combine procainamide and quinidine along with the AV nodal blocking agents, right? Because these drugs can increase the AV nodal conductivity resulting in paroxysmal tachycardia, right? You take this procainamide and quinidine. What are they doing? They are increasing the action potential duration. So once there is increase in the action potential duration, what is happening? The cell is in the phase of depolarization. That means what is your procainamide and quinidine they are doing? They are increasing the conductivity across the AV node. So once they increase the conductivity across the AV node, that will result in paroxysmal tachycardia. So what I want to tell you here is, in patients with atrial fibrillation, Whenever you are using procainamide and as well as quinidine, you should definitely give them along with the AV nodal blocking agents. Why? Because, now let me show you here. Now, so this is your, a four chambered heart, right, wherein you have the right atrium, in this right atrium you have the SA node and somewhere here over you have the AV node. Right, you have the AV node and you have the internodal fibers. Right, you have the internodal fibers. Now, the impulse from the SA node passes through the internodal fibers, then it enters into the AV node. From the AV node, the impulse it passes into the bundle branches. That is right bundle branch and as well as the left bundle branch. In case of atrial fibrillation, the atria they are abnormally firing, right? The atria they fire nearly around 400 to 600 times in atrial fibrillation. So, when all this atrial firing, once they pass through your AV node, then even the ventricle will also land up in ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. So, now if at all when you are giving procainamide and quinidine, what does this procainamide and quinidine will do? Procainamide and quinidine, they will increase the action potential duration. Right, I have discussed that. Why do they increase the action potential duration? Because they block the potassium channels. Now, that means this procainamide and quinidine, they are trying to keep the cell in a phase of depolarization. Right, they are trying to keep the cell in a phase of depolarization. That means, when you are giving procainamide and as well as quinidine, what do they do? They will see that the cell is in the state of depolarization and thereby the fibrillating atria can send their impulse through the AV node into the ventricle resulting in the paroxysmal tachycardia. So, 
in order to avoid that particular paroxysmal tachycardia, what you do is you block this AV node, right? You block this AV node. So how can you block this AV node by AV nodal blocking agents that is digoxin, verapamil and as well as beta blockers, all right? So when you use these particular drugs, the advantage is the individual will not land up in paroxysmal tachycardia, all right? So why are we using these drugs? Because this procainamide and quinidine, right, procainamide and quinidine, they increase, right, they increase AV nodal conductivity, right, they increase the AV nodal conductivity resulting in paroxysmal tachycardia. Right, resulting in paroxysmal tachycardia. So this is about your the class 1A agents. So let me shortly revise up to here what we have discussed. Remember procainamide it is a derivative of a procaine. Procaine it is a local anesthetic and this particular procainamide it is given orally. And this procainamide remember it is metabolized in the liver by acetylation to produce N-acetyl procainamide. And that particular N-acetyl procainamide it retains the potassium channel blocking activity. And you take this acetylation, right? You have the fast and as well as the slow acetylators of the procainamide, which is almost similar to that of your isoniazid, which is a first line anti tubercular drug. A point what you should remember is the long term therapy, long term therapy with high dose of this drug can result in drug induced lupus erythematosus, particularly in case of the slow acetylators. Now, where all we use this class 1A agents? The indications for class 1A agents, they are supraventricular tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, symptomatic ventricular premature beats and as well as the prevention of ventricular fibrillation. Now, while procainamide and quinidine may be used for the conversion of the atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm, they should only be used in conjunction with AV node blocking agents like digoxin, verapamil or a beta blocker because these drugs that is procainamide and quinidine can increase the AV nodal conductivity resulting in paroxysmal tachycardia.